Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you, subscribers and all viewers. By far, appreciate it. I'm honored to be here before you to display this. Environmental Management System ISO 14001 version 2015. What is it about? Answer is it is about managing environmental aspects. How? By fulfilling compliance obligation and addressing risk and opportunities. That's it. What is environmental aspect? Environmental aspects are anything, item, matter, substance, equipment, even machine which interacts or can interact with the environment. Okay. So another question is how do we identify environmental aspects? That is what we are here before you. There you are. Input, output analysis. It is based on a, the principles used in uh, mass balances if you studied mechanical engineering and many other engineering. All right. This is one of the methodology. One methodology which is successful in identifying environmental aspects. Before we go on, my Muslim brothers and sisters, please do not watch this video if you are in the most for the Friday prayers or attending any religious lessons. Thank you very much. I wish you Jannah tonight. Thank you. Love you for that. Okay. Have we ever thought that uh, our toxic and hazardous waste upon collection by our licensed contractor supposedly to be sent to a so-called prescribed premise for disposal didn't reach the prescribed premise and all we know we got a call from the authority that our uh, toxic and hazardous waste bearing our name and those labels as you know caught fire have we ever thought of addressing that real emergency situation in our environmental management system that's worth thinking i've got a case here and we'll talk about it okay after this immediately after this i am going to show you where this input output analysis is situated in the chronology of the implementation of iso 14001 we'll take a look at that and then we'll look into the input output analysis for one activity which we really don't look forward to and normally we didn't address, we didn't address in the ISO 14001, which is firefighting, not in the company, but elsewhere. <laughs> All right. And after that, I'll show you the dashboard where it is a platform, how we display our list of uh, activities and their respective environmental aspects and their associated environmental impact, their rating, and then I have included risk and opportunity column and also environmental performance evaluation for you to ponder, for you to improve it better for your disposal. All right, let's take a look where this process is. <clears throat> what we have here in display is the chronology summarized steps in the implementation of ISO 14001. All right, and uh, the top part where you have got context of organization and all these administrative stuff normally I would uh, uh, deploy the admin and top ma and the management staff to do it. When we talk about input output analysis, it is about identifying environmental aspect. And by far, we are here when, when we do the, ident the identification of environmental aspects, we are right here. Why is this important? Because as we start to implement the ISO 14001 environmental management system, the first thing that we have to do is to identify all our environmental aspects from all activities, 
from all departments, from our entire organization and from the entire borders of our scope of certification. That's very important. That's the first thing we do. And normally before this, in 1996, when I began this, we call it initial environmental review. And I picked that up from Germany, uh, from the system called uh, environmental management and audit scheme. Uh, and uh, uh, British standards then was BS7750, having environmental management system. That's how I studied environmental management system those days. Now, that is the first step. Once we have identified the input output analysis for all the processes has been identified with that list of environmental aspects, what we do is we evaluate. We need to evaluate these aspects. Why? We need to determine which aspects is, is causing more significant impact. So we call it significant environmental aspects. The impact could be water pollution, could be air pollution, etc. So this evaluation has a set of evaluation criteria to determine which aspect would cause a more significant impact. And with that, we add in what this standard version 2015 wants us to look at is risk and opportunities. And then we sum them up in a list that we call Aspects Impact Register. This is what I normally address as the dashboard. Here we are. Then more than half of our task in the environmental management system is done over here. It is lengthy. With this document, with this dashboard or aspects impact register now our company we know our position as far as environmental management is concerned from there the top management and the steering committee and all involved in environmental management would then have got to sit down then formulate what we call what the standard called environmental policy so the environmental policy has got to conjure to your situation as far as the environment is concerned and from there we get back to the environmental aspect impact register and start to formulate our environmental objectives and target we got to sit down and really build into this uh, lay out our environmental objectives based on the aspects impact register and from these objectives what are our real target it has got to be achievable okay and how to arrive how to meet the target meaning what to do who do it when to do it how to do it and how much resources is needed it could be monetary it could be labor man hour it could be some investment with equipment it could be involving some studies all these are resources okay and that has got to be in what we call planning actions to achieve in this new standard and it is also known as environmental management program please don't change the word environmental management program if you already have it it is part of planning action to achieve planning action action to achieve is more holistic but to achieve the word to achieve is not ordinary emp that you can you know uh, <laughs> amend here and there and not to implement it it has this is serious all right we got to achieve it and also we have to ensure that all this would sum up as our intended outcome and this standard really emphasizes on environmental performance enhancement the betterment of our environmental performance has got to be part of our objective and target we need to ensure that we are able to improve our environmental performance <coughs> Excuse me. 
And also, in view of that, we are also required to ensure that we are able to fulfill our compliance obligation. It could be compliance obligation with the authority, with the various environmental law, with the municipal, with the contractor, with the vendors, with the suppliers, with our stakeholders, with the insurance company, with the uh, ruling party, political perhaps, and all other interested parties uh, which has got interest with this and we got interest with them is a two-way communication. And also, we have got to ensure that this particular uh, uh, intended outcome does include real achievement of our environmental objectives. Okay, let's take a look at the input output analysis. This is what I was saying that for this company, the schedule is toxic and hazardous waste left the company but they didn't reach the, reach the prescribed premise. Instead, it is being dumped illegally somewhere between the factory and the prescribed premise. Now, in environmental management, have we included this? This year alone in 2020, various offenses were similar to this, okay? And schedule waste and hazardous waste are not arriving at their prescribed premises but instead was dumped somewhere in between stored some illegal warehouse stored in some illegal off-site transit who is responsible for that have we addressed that in our environmental management system and that if you are familiar with environmental management system this is totally an emergency situations so aspects that are involved in this activity, firefighting actually, uh, away from our premise are aspects released or involved in emergency situations. So I hope the next time you have your review of your environmental management system, please do not <laughs> omit this possibility. Okay, this is the methodology in identifying environmental aspect. We got input and output. Now let's take one example of the environmental aspects. I just picked a few of these examples because there are many more examples but space is not permitting so I just pick a few for our discussion. The aim is for you to understand how we determine environmental impact. So in this case fire water is an environmental aspect, right? Now, we got to ask this question. This is an input. Fire water come from the firefighting work uh, department uh, in Malaysia. We call it Bomba. It comes in with the fire water from their tanks. And sometimes they would use uh, water from ponds or rivers or ditches. Okay. Now, so the fire water is an input to this process. Okay, and it is an input aspect. So by virtue of it being an input aspect, its associated environmental aspects, uh, sorry, uh, associated environmental impact has got to be viewed by trailing its life cycle perspective in the direction upstream. Okay, and this fire water may in this case was taken from a pond i think and that interacts with the environment because a fire is water is being extracted by a powerful pump from that uh, water body and thus we can say that due to that enormous extraction of water per unit time it may cause some hydrological imbalance definitely definitely it has some impact to the ecological system over there okay so that is how fire water interact with the environment this causes some hydrological issues on the other hand the toxic fire fighting water in other words this water is being used to be sprayed or poured onto this burning, glowing, 
toxic and hazardous waste which caught fire. So the fire water is being applied there. And then all this fire water bursts into fumes and those water, uh, the excess water would, fl would flow out. From this area, some of them seeps into the ground, some would flow out. That is the water that we are going to address. In other words, this fire water has diluted this toxic and hazardous industrial waste in the form of sludge or liquid and diluted things like what, uh, mercury, cadmium, copper, nickel, zinc, selenium, beryllium, etc. in the suspension of water and it flows away to the lower gradient of this particular area. And what does it do? Interact with the environment. What, it, how, how, how does it interact? It might seep into uh, the soil. Therefore, this fire water is an output aspect. In order to determine its environmental impact, we got to know what happens to it next. Therefore, we go downstream of its life cycle perspective. That's how we determine the environmental impact. So downstream, what happened to it is it can seep into the ground, contaminate the verdosa zone, topsoil, etc., and causes uh, soil pollution or even groundwater pollution. The rest may flow because it's quite a mess. It's a mess of of body of water from this firefighting is very wet, okay? And it, those uh, might flow away into the lower part of this land and find its way into some form of ditches, perhaps, or even rivers, and cause inland water pollution. That is how this toxic firefighting water interacts with the environment and causes those environmental aspects. So I hope since uh, cases like this is quite rampant today as we speak in the year 2020, so we've got to have this in our environmental management system. So the rest of the aspect you think for yourself, all right, and 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 give a comment in this uh, column below this uh, particular video. Uh, there's a column for comments. Give your comment, give your ideas, all right? And uh, we'll interact. If, you, if you've got questions to ask, you're welcome to ask from it down there. All right, and let's take a look at our, this is one example illustration. I hope you understood what is the life cycle perspective of each aspect which is used in determining their environmental or associated environmental impact. Let's take a look at the dashboard now. So, when we have the list of environmental aspects from all the processes, could you imagine how lengthy this list is? downwards, okay, vertical, then we know what type of environmental aspects have we, how significant those environmental aspects are, and how urgent that we got to manage them by virtue of their potential impact to the environment in terms of magnitude of impact, severity of impact, and we also address bioreceptors in our impact, impact uh, aspects, impact evaluation criteria over here. Okay, so we have a column here, activity, process, name that we have, and please remember process name is not an environmental aspect. It is an element in our organization, but it's not an environmental aspect. So take a look. This is the environmental aspect, okay? That these aspects interact with the environment and causes these impacts, got it? Okay, and importantly in this uh, uh, dashboard that I have developed over the years, uh, please include risk and opportunity over here. Risk and opportunity. 
then we have it in our dashboard. We know what are the environmental aspects, which are most significant, and what are the risks associated to every environmental aspect. Some of them, you might not find the risk. <laughs> consult. Please consult your consultant, your trainers, and maybe your consultant have a better uh, format than this. Please consult them, all right? Your existing uh, consultant and trainers, they will brief you, give you ideas and give you some guidance. And, uh, and uh, we have also opportunity, for example, this uh, toxic fire water. Uh, this is based on uh, 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 the, uh, what they call Zandes uh, incident. We have checkpoints or fire, fire, fire fighting water ponds or even, you know, uh, trenches for that. So these are all opportunities and risks. And uh, of course, in our environmental management system, take a look at toxic residue can contaminate groundwater. Now, how many, as far as this country is concerned, after the incident site assessment has been done? It is our obligation to the public because they are bioreceptors and to the ecosystem. We have got to do site assessment to determine how much of damage has been done to the environment and we have got to remediate. I'm still not hearing anything about re remediation as far as incidents that have occurred in this year alone, 2020. I've not heard anything. All right. All I heard of are penalties in court, compounds, legal actions. But what happened to the site? What has been done? What sort of recovery? What sort of rehabilitation to bring those uh, ecological systems back the way it was before the incidents? So this is the purpose of environmental management system, not just for certification, but due diligence. Okay, and uh, that is why I'm here. Thank you, uh, YouTube. Thank you subscribers, uh, viewers, and I thank you for those who have given their thoughts. I hope you expand this uh, to a higher level. I'm not taking credit in any, any of my work. Please use it anywhere, anytime you want, okay? And uh, I end this video with, uh, since I'm a Malay, in a Malay, I would end this uh, by wishing you semoga dikurniakan kesenangan, keselamatan, kesejahteraan, dan kebahagiaan kehidupan di dunia dan di akhirat. And until we meet in the next video, inshallah, to all of you, whoever you are, wherever you are, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.